word of advice, I wouldn't give the person that's trying to kill you your home address. Okay, so today I am reviewing Iron Man 3, and it stars Robert Downey Jr., Gwyneth Paltrow, Don Cheadle, Ben Kingsley, and Guy Pearce, and is directed by Shane Black, who wrote Kiss who wrote Lethal Weapon, I think he wrote Kiss King Bang Bang, but he definitely directed it, which also starred Robert Downey Jr. And in this movie, this takes place after the Avengers, and it really shows that Tony is going through a really hard time. He can't focus, he can't sleep because he has terrible nightmares of what happened in New York, and he's having anxiety panic attacks. I mean, it's really bad. He's having them, I think he had at least like five in the movie. Along with that, he has to deal with the Mandarin, which is this terrorist. It's not a good time for this to be happening, but he has to deal with this. And the first thing I gotta say is that I thought it would be definitely more darker than it was. Surprisingly, it felt like the tone of Iron Man. So take that as you will. There's surprisingly a lot of funny parts in here, and genuinely funny. Some don't work, but most actually do. And I found myself laughing along with the whole audience, so that was really fun. So first I'm gonna start off with some positives. As I said before, the comedy is really great as well as seeing Robert Downey Jr. He's the same old, same old Tony Stark, except a little bit more messed up. But also, I gotta say, the action was fan fantastic in this movie. I was on the edge of my seat for most of the action scenes. They were really well put together, really exciting. They went on for quite a while, which I love long action scenes, but not too long to where you get tired of it, so that's good. Probably my favorite scene is where Tony is saving the 13 people that's falling out of the airplane. That's an amazing scene. But also, like, the scene where, you know, they're blowing up his house, that's fantastic, too. And the final scene's really exciting as well. You see all these different Iron Men, and it's not as, like, ugh, as you think it would be. But, unfortunately, <sighs> there are some downsides. And that's definitely coming from the characters' part and the actors. So, I'm going to start with the Mandarin. Let's just get that out of the way. I hated the way they did the Mandarin in this. The first part was okay, although they kind of poorly developed him because you only saw him when he was broadcasting message out to everyone. It established that he was really dangerous, but nothing really else. But there's something that they do in half part of the movie, and that just made me go, what the heck? Seriously, I, I actually got really mad because at the time, I thought the movie was like this, but then it fell to here. That's a huge drop. That really messed up the movie for me as a whole. I don't know what was going through the writer's mind when they were writing the script for that, but that's a terrible idea. Some people liked it, most didn't though, and I'm one of those people. I will not say what happened, but... I was really disappointed that happened. First I thought it was kind of amusing, but then I thought, wait, wait, what? Also, there are some characters in this movie that's really underdeveloped, have no personality at all, and one of these people is Rebecca Hall. She has no personality at all. I mean, she's barely in the movie, but when she is, she just, there's no presence to her at all. And it's just like, just such a bland character. It's just one-dimensional. You'll easily forget about her after you've seen the movie, as well as this guy, James Badsdale. And I say him, he played Sabin. I didn't even know that was his name. But this guy is really in the movie a lot. He really is kind of like a right-hand man of Guy Pierce. I'll get to him in a minute. But this guy, same thing, one-dimensional. All he's there to be is just someone who gets in the way, always trying to attack people. He's just nothing, really. He's bland. He He's emotionless. Uh, there's not anything there that'll make you really remember anything about him. It's kind of almost like he doesn't really talk that much, but neither did Boba Fett, and yet he is such a cool character in the background just standing there. You won't remember him in probably 10 minutes after you see the movie. I only, I have to remember him because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm reviewing it. Guy Pierce. <laughs> okay, I kind of, I like Guy Pierce. I think he's a good actor, but... <laughs> I don't really know what to say for his character, I mean, not memorable at all. I think. I 
you know, I I think when you look back, you really you won't really remember anything about this character, and he's 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 the villain. He's in it a lot, and it's just not really anything to distinguish against from other villains. He did fine. It's just not memorable. Also, I was really disappointed that they didn't have Don Cheadle as much in the movie. I really like it when Robert Downey Jr. and Don Cheadle are together and they're just conversating and talking. I think they have really great chemistry together. They make a good team. And they didn't have much of that in this movie. I mean, they had it towards the maybe last 45 minutes of the movie. But most of it, they were in completely different areas. That kind of disappointed me. Uh, also, Gwyneth Paltrow, she, 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 she was okay. She didn't really do anything. She added something to the movie. One thing she does do towards the end of the movie, she, something happens to her. And she does this, this crazy thing. Um... I don't want to ruin it, but it's just like so out of character. It's not even believable for her character, even if something happened to her. I I also have to say though that there's this one kid. There's this kid in this movie, and you think that oh great kid, but actually he was really cute, and he was actually had more development than the Mandarin or you know all these other characters put together. He was just really helpful for Tony, and actually surprisingly they had really great chemistry together. They had you know snappy comments back and forth to each other and it was actually really funny to watch. Some technical stuff I guess you can say is that for IMAX it's not fully worth it. There's great sound, the picture is clear, crystal clear. The 3D is really kind of nothing special. So if you want to see this in 2D go ahead. It's okay like I mean you'll get your money's worth if you do see it in IMAX 3D or regular 3D but you're not gonna miss anything if you can't. Also please remember to stay after the credits there is a scene. So yeah that's really all I have to say. Robert Downey Jr. really holds this movie together. Uh, I really wanted to see more of Gwyneth Paltrow and Don Cheadle. The Mandarin was just ugh. Guy Pierce was unmemorable and there are some really underdeveloped characters so I'm going to give this movie three stars. I know. Just lash out on me. I know. Please understand that I love Iron Man. I love Robert Downey Jr. I love all the cast. And I really was looking forward to this film so much. But the things that they did in it was just kind of like odd. This good. It's not great. It's still worth seeing definitely in theaters on uh, opening weekend. There are some fantastic action scenes, and that alone is just worth admission. I, I really did really want to love this film. Um, I was really excited, and I was just disappointed. Alright, you can start the hatred coming. <laughs> but please understand that I do really did enjoy this film, but I'm looking at it as a critical point of view. There are just a lot of things wrong with the film, and it's not perfect by any means. So... Please don't kill me. Please don't write. Please don't be harsh on me, okay? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Remember to always keep it real. And I will be back next week, hopefully, to review The Great Gatsby. So stick around for that. Goodbye.